We're getting drunk dressing up like Jane Austen characters and eating horrible jelly beans. Join us for live beer and board games, live or anytime, live.beerandboard.com. D&D 5E, cue the animation. All right, let's play this adventure, man. We got some pre-made characters here, and I've selected mine. I am a dr human <coughs> druid outlander. My name is Bernardo Shrubsberry. That's a good druid. You may call me Nardo. I was raised by wolves. I've suckled at the teat of a she-wolf. Who hasn't? Up until I was at least 19. Oh, uh, well, maybe not that long. <laughs> <laughs> and it is my duty to provide children to sustain my tribe, so I like the sex. It's no coincidence, then, that you are drawing a shrub. On your character I sheet. did it. That's my family crest. I gotta tell you, it kind of looks like a lady's thatch. Hey, I, uh, it's my duty to provide children to sustain my tribe. We're like a we're like a sex tribe. I'm a necromancer, and my name is Mitch Underground. I don't <laughs> like to bathe. I want to stick it to the rich. I think they need to be shown what life and death are like in the gutters. Who are you? I am a barbarian. Oddly, I really enjoy being strong and breaking things, and my hatred of my enemies is blind and unreasoning. Um, and my Dick. name is Dick Shovel. The Shield Dwarf. The Shield Dwarf. Dick, Mitch, and Bernardo. Nardo. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nardo. So whenever you run across the lady, you like hold your crest up and like, yeah, yeah. you'll do. And he holds yes. his crest up. Checks out. What so, you got down there, right. checks out. <laughs> it's appropriate that your characters are a druidic sex tribe because your characters are from a small remote town called Plowsmore. Do you know who your parents are? No, but I have a feeling they're named after yard implements. That, wasn't that your father's name? Yard Implement? <laughs> Yard Implement, yes. Well, you're all getting drunk at the inn across from the temple. I'm gonna start wrestling people for drinking money. You you do notice there is a very large looking figure sitting in the corner. Let's go for a round for a round. Round for round on a drink? Yeah. Who wants to bet on this fight? I'll take the bets right here. 10 gold that this man will win the fight. I'm not gonna bet 10 gold. If he wins, it'll be five gold. No, I'll bet, five a, gold. I'll bet a silver piece. Oh, uh, one silver piece. Anybody else want to bet? Is there any takers? A small child throws a copper piece. All right. I'll bet. And what's your name, little son? Radley. Radley. Very well. One copper for Radley, one silver piece for Bonardo. Is your first name Boo? <laughs> My last name's Boo. Your name is Radley Boo? Radley Boo. What are you doing in this <laughs> inn? My mama's helping the customers. Oh, helping. I see. Oh. Upstairs. And what's her name? Juanita? Juanita Boo? I punched the kid in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the bartender. Barkeep, do you have any specials this evening? Dragon's milk. Uh, how much? Two electrum pieces. <laughs> Is that less than one silver? <laughs> no. What are you, stupid? You don't know the currency exchange rates? <laughs> I am from the woods. <laughs> when you're in the woods, you drink for free out of a... Pond. What kind of booze comes out of a pond? It's uh, it's near the big rock candy mountain. There's a lake full of stew and of whiskey too. You can paddle all around it in a big canoe in the big rock candy mountain. All right, suddenly a, a lusty farm girl stumbles into the I, bar. Boing. I thought you were gonna say a lusty fuck maiden. <laughs> she appears hypnotized and disturbed. Somebody's gotta come with me to the barn. Somebody's gotta come with me to What's the barn. What's wrong with you? Snap out of it. Snap out of it. No, I can't. Psh. Ow! Wait, Ow. wait, stop. If I slap her enough, she'll snap out of no, it. No, let's go to the barn and find out what the problem is. Psh. Oh. Psh. Ow. Ow. As you As approach the barn, you smell the overwhelming stench of death. I say we approach this barn cautiously. I say we get excited. I run into the barn. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Screaming. There's nothing There's nothing there. It's completely empty, but there are several stalls and you hear deep, labored, heavy breathing. <laughs> Can I tell where it's coming from? It's coming from inside your mind, as well as from somewhere in the barn. I have my scimitar drawn. I'm running around with my battle axe up in the air going, ah! 
like trying to find what's uh, uh, making the sound inside my head and smash it. Now I have a passive wisdom okay. ability. You can make a perception check. Oh, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. You actually become just, sort of I just paralyzed like with. I paralyzed with fear. Yeah, okay. Paralyzed with fear. <laughs> You're like, I wonder what that sound is. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I'd like to use my perception to try to understand what's happening with the heavy breathing horse. Okay. Oh, yeah! A 20. A natural type. Not world. only do you know exactly where it's coming from in mm-hmm. the barn, but you also recognize the breathing is, is sort of some sort of telepathy that's traveling into your mind. I approach and open the stall with the horse breather. You first, you retch in disgust. <coughs> and you see a beholder floating eyeball with stalks, and its central eye is wounded. It's completely been gouged, almost gouged out. It's kind of hanging out of its... I see a beholder. It's been violated. It starts to speak with you. My name is Fixadix. I had my hypnotized maiden come and get you because you're the most intelligent beings in this town. Well, thank you, beholder. What happened, Fixadix? I was wounded. I have an army stationed about about five five miles miles from here. An army of beholders? No, an army army of cabals cabals and goblins goblins and other other unsavories. We were were attacking attacking a town, town, and I was wounded wounded by by some some sort of champion with a sword. sword. How did you end up in this stall at this farm? I retreated here, here, separated from my army after I killed the buffoon that wounded me. Oh, so this isn't a farm where they raise beholders? No, No, there's 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 beholders beholders here. here. My name is Mitch Underground, and I'm here to rescue you. That's great. great. I need need help help from some some adventurers adventurers to gather gather some some herbs herbs to cure cure my my eye. eye. Ah, now you're speaking my language. I am proficient with herbalism kit. You won't be able to find these herbs herbs around around here. here. You'll only be able to find them in a cave cave. about a a mile away away from here. here. Oh, cave herbs. What's, why should we do this besides the fact that I want to rescue you? I have have a bag of gold here for starters. starters. Electrum? He just said gold. 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 I'm in. Whatever it takes to rescue Fixadix. By the clan of Shrubsberry, I say it shall be done. I have a question. Yes, yes, barbarian. barbarian. So your eye is kind of like goopy. It, uh, is it like more drippy or goopy? Or I start like poking at it. And, like, taste <laughs> ah, it. Ah, <laughs> God, oh, get away from my eye. eye. You clots. Very good. Off to the cave, I say. I haven't been to a cave in at least eight months. I've never been outside the city. This will be a good time for you. Yes, it will. Are you small? Well, I'm an elf, so yes, I'm a bit small. Would you like to ride on my back? I would, but I'm not small down there, so... Get him up on my back and we're we're going to the uh, cave. I'm going to climb up on his back. Okay. We all fall down. (laughs) Well, you should make a strength check. Let's give you a shot. I rolled an 11. All right, I'll say you you, you can carry them both a mile. (laughs) But you'll have to make a constitution check at the end to make sure your back isn't injured <laughs> at the end. I throw them both off. I'm not, I'm not carrying them in a while. You won't let me ride you? No, because if you jump on my back, he's going to jump on your back again. I've got the shortest legs. I jump on his back. I don't I don't ride on his back so much as I put my legs over his shoulders. So, so my, you're still walking? So, and my dick's like pressed up against his... I take my U wand and I smack him in the ass with it and drive him like a, like a cow. As you leave, you hear the Beholder's voice echo in your head. <laughs> Please find the herbs, you fools! We're going! We're going! We're just figuring out the best way to get there. This is smart, trust me. <laughs> how much gold How much gold is in that sack? About uh, 300 gold pieces. You arrive at the cave, and there is an enormous statue <clears throat> of a snake. This wasn't here before. It is a statue. It has, it has strangely lifelike eyes. I've heard about these people told in tales and legends, campfire legends, post-sex stories. Post-sex stories? That yes. sounds like a good book. I was dabbling with the idea of writing a book called Post-Sex Stories. Ah. I start climbing up on the snake so I can gouge its eyes out. As you are climbing the snake statue, suddenly it starts to speak. I start climbing faster. Stop for a second. I have a riddle that you must answer before you can enter the cave. Okay, I pause for a minute. How many electrum pieces go into one gold piece? I think it's two. We've solved your riddle, 
lizard statue. Is that your final answer? I don't know. Yes, it two. It could be five. It could be five. I think it's two. Uh, I think silver is five. You are correct, humans. Yes. The stone door that was at the cave entrance starts to roll slowly back. You enter the cave scimitar drawn. Anybody else? Axe is always fucking hot, dude. Axe always. is always fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. That should be your motto. <laughs> I just have my hands out like this because I'm a necromancer. But in any case, you enter the cave. Large, waist high grass strokes your thighs as you travel through this cavern. Grass is growing inside of a cave? It's special purple grass. So when you say waist high, is like, for me, is this like up to here? Actually, yes, it's probably about eye okay. height. I jump you. on his shoulders. Three, eight. Your ball sack slams hard into his cranium. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I haven't had balls on my head since Tuesday. What? Let's, have, let's everybody make a perception check. I want to see some rolls. Come on. 14. 15 plus 3 is 18. Okay. I got a five. I'm just like... <laughs> I try to jump up every once in a while. You're still distracted by the intense humiliation you feel. Yeah, I still got the ghost of nuts on my head. You do. So uh, you both notice tentacles starting to rise out of the ground. Uh, guys, tentacles. Huh? Tentacles! Tentacles! What kind of tentacles Just are like, they? Uh, Fish tentacles or? I no, they're your standard carp tentacles. Shut up. <laughs> they're pink and they're hairy. Penis tentacles? And they're wrinkly. I don't see the advantage of fighting this roper. I think we should go into the cave where the herbs are. Let's get out. The roper does get an attack on a random one of you. Wait, are you rolling a d6? Yeah. I've got the d6 for you. Tonight, We've got some special 8-bit dice from Turn 1 Gaming Supplies. They emailed us and they were like, do you guys want some dice? And we were like, okay. And then they sent us these dice. Cool! Check it out. You can roll a special Mario 8 Alright, I'm gonna say 1 to 4. Run! Up, that attacks you. Yeah, yeah. Brad! 17. Okay. Two points of damage. Oh god. One D four damage? We could probably kill this. We probably thing. could kill it. Assholes! <laughs> what is druid craft? Trip. I suspect it involves crafting. Did you bring any sort of, of source books with you? <laughs> or it's all in here. <laughs> Apparently it's, it's not. I'll tell you what druid craft is. Listen to this. Tell me what druid craft is. Bitch. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> John, I can't look it up when you, you do ruined. that. Tell me I want you to call me Stop. sugar tits. You would like me to call you sugar tits? Yes. <laughs> okay, sugar tits. What's next? Next. <laughs> what is a druid craft cantrip? Okay, I found this on the web for what, what is, is a druid cantrip. Whispering to the spirits of nature, you create one of the following effects within range. You create a tiny harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be at your location for 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a fucking phone. It's like an app on your phone. <laughs> your druid app. What are the other possible effects? You instantly make a flower blossom, or a seed pod open, or a leaf bud bloom. Nice. You create an instantaneous harmless sensory effect such as falling leaves, a puff of wind, the sound of a small animal, or the faint odor of skunk. Okay, great. I'm going to use that cantrip like five times a day. Thank you. Your wish is my command. All right, well, let's attack the roper. Yeah, let's get him. He's angry at us because he thinks we're a gay tenant <clears throat> living with two hot women. Mm -hmm. One of whom keeps changing. Got my rapier, plus five. You're going to get it now, sucker. 22! That hits. Come on, eight. You got to do eight. I got to do a lot of damage here. Come on. It's eight. I did eight. The tentacle you're stabbing writhes and falls limp in front of you. Yeah, I go like this. As my second action for the turn, I just, I'm like, fuck you. So are they all dead? No, just one. Oh, fuck. Out of how many? There's there's three more, but they can't they can't all get to you at once. I killed mine, guys. I killed mine. <laughs> killed it first. <laughs> On my sleeve. All right. Uh, Miss Uke, shots for all. Yay! Miss Uke. And she also would like Oh, that's pretty good. A round of Relay Rolfing to welcome Bo. Oh, fun. I love Relay Relay Rolfing. What is that? What is Relay Rolfing? Yesterday, I saw Bo down at Sandwich Shop, and he ordered a deluxe bagel with lakes trout. And he said to the person making the sandwich, Whoa. 
you do with the trash? What you do? <laughs> <laughs> he went over to the z- cellar, which was oddly on the same level as the shop, and he got a great big slice of fine porn. Mm. In a box, and he shaved his nuts. Realized he was a public person, and he sort of panicked and cooled off (laughs) in a pool of water. (laughs) Oh my god, how did you spill like 10 pizzas on the floor? Which is pretty good because you're just a sandwich. All right, so you are continuing to attack the roper. We are venturing further into the cave to yes. try and find herbs. Is it 10? Tentacle definitely dodges you and attacks back. Attacks back. <laughs> it's going to get you. I'm Jason Stevens. <laughs> Jasonsvoices.com. Day number 38. Has he done? <laughs> has he done Sean Connery yet? Sean Connery puts Two an apple on a table. Damage. Well, well, Mr. Table, what do you think of that golden delicious? This has been Jason's Voices doing a fucking voice every day. (laughs) Next up, Christopher Walken gets frustrated at a vending machine. (laughs) Come on! My dollar is not folded. Morgan Freeman dodges bananas. There's another one. Seems those bananas are flying at me at a a rapid pace. (laughs) 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 Boom, (laughs) boom, boom, boom. Day 622. Suddenly you hear a roar from beneath the floor. Oh, a floor roar. The roper emerges. It has very large, sharp teeth and large yellow eyes. Are y'all fuckers? Hello? And what are you lo- doing? It lunges after you with its last tentacle and its last mouth. Fuck. I mean, its only mouth. 